Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vasso and welcome to 10,000 and Below, a game where we look at games, uh, a, a video actually, where we look at games that are ranked 10,000 or less on Board Game Geek. Today we're at 12,401 to 12,500. Now I do want to tell you that as I record these, I'm not recording them all in one go. I don't think that's humanly possible. It's been about a week and a half since I recorded the last ones and already there are some changes. So you're going to see some games that we've talked about before as we go through this list. That's just the way this works. So let's get started. The first game here is Tonk, so T-O-N-C-C. -C. This looks like a, it's a self-published game here. It looks like a simultaneous direction. You're going to be building up this board with discs. How are you going to move this? you got to get three symbols or pawns in a line. Hmm. Looks like it's abstract with a little too much going on in the, for that, that from my, my, I don't know, maybe. All right, Team Yankee. I remember talking about this one in the past. It's a war game, not a baseball game. I mentioned it last time. So let's look at one we haven't looked at before. Cool and pool. That must mean something cool at the pool. Ah, I see. This came out in 2016. Um, has a bunch of sunbathers. Looks like you're trying to get them in the right spot. Well, that's definitely a theme. That's definitely a scene that when you go to the water park, everybody trying to get those spots as quickly as they can. All righty. Uh, let's, let's see. It's from Piatnik, who makes some pretty good games. Two to four players. Very low weight game. All right. Cool. I would try that. Alpaca pancakes. All right. Well, we got to take a look at that one. Alpaca. Oh, that's a weird cover. Isn't that cover weird? Ah, but that looks like maybe that's the way this game works. You're making a long neck. <laughs> All righty. I'd play a game where you have a long neck like that. Yeah, you're trying to have the most beautiful, this beautiful length scoring is determined by fashion sense and length of neck. All right. More bloody nights. This one has a lot of rankings here. Blanc Manger Coco. It's a French, oh, it's a French Cards Against Humanity. And now that I've said that, I'm pretty sure I talked about that last time, too. Zooming down, Mimic, I said, was a good card game. Manhattan Traffic Cube, Black Stories, Cryptocurrency, Age of Chivalry. There's Encounters, Bravest Warriors. This is based on the cartoon Bravest Warriors. Um, from Catalyst Game Labs. You know, I remember them showing this to me. It's a push your luck dice game, but I don't remember this ever came in. It looks like it's a very small game. This one must not have gotten a lot of buzz. Just because there's not a lot. I mean, again, there's, what, 70 ratings? Not a lot of talk about this one. Z, well, Z reviewed it. Never mind, it did come in. It must not have been very good. Maybe it was, though. He never mentioned it. Visualize, a good party game. Uh, I talked about that last time, but just a quick refresher. In this one, you're going to roll a ton of giant dice, and then you're going to make compound words or phrases out of these dice that are rolled. It's a pretty good game, actually. Flower Power is a different one than the one I know, the Enigma Box. All right, that has me curious. What game would the Enigma Box be about? It's from 2017. We want to present you the greatest experience of all time on Kickstarter. What does this even tell you? They just keep telling you how good the game is. Look at this. You can either play it on your own. We guarantee this experience will not leave you unsatisfied. It's designed and supported by world-class experts in the fields of technology, history, and entertainment. Fantastic. Is it a good game? That's what we want to know. What's the game about? Is it a puzzle? Will history know your name? Guess not. Alrighty, that's let's these parodies. This is from Reiner Knizia. Artwork by Franz Vowinkel. It's an auction game with lots of wooden coins. Okay. It looks okay. That is a very boring looking game, frankly. 
That's a 1993 publicity shot. Um, now I'm going down a rabbit trail here. All righty. Uno Jr. has 240. Um, it's fiber up, so it looks like it's animals and numbers. So you can match by number, color, or animal. I see. It's a third thing for kids. All right. Kids tend to like Uno a lot. Thieves. I gave this one a two. I did not like this game at all. I just re-ranked it uh, looking at it. Um, this got People's Choice Award for Best Abstract Games at UK Games Expo 2018. And I just had someone really rip me to shreds on my review of this. But this game is so bad. You roll dice and that's the colors you can move your pieces into. It's a nice looking game. But it is not fun to play. Sardines. That sounds like a hide and seek game I used to play. Where one person hit, everyone looks for them, and when you find them, you hide with them. And you keep doing that to everyone's hiding in the same place. This reminds me of that salmon game with the lipstick on the salmon. <laughs> I don't know why all the sardines are wearing clothing here. Ah, it's for five-year-olds. So it's a memory game. You need to remember the sequencing of the sardines. Uh, who's the publisher here? Jekko. Sifaka, November 2015. I do remember the first time I played this was at Board Game Geek Con. I brought a copy with me there. And you're putting out these tiles like this and moving these uh, Sifakas around trying to pick up your colored fruits. It's kind of like a little programming um, game. It was okay. The Abandons. That kind of looks cool, that cover. Wait a minute, didn't I look at this last time? The Pressure Luck solo game? Oh, I'd play a Pressure Luck solo game. I just did, called Coffee Roaster. Zen Garden. <sighs> this is from Mayfair Games. This was back with Funfair Game when they made pretty low quality looking games. And I remember this one at the, at the Origins. They had a little rake where you could rake the sand. And it's like, ooh, look at this game. It just doesn't look that good. And you were putting these tiles down and building out a garden in front of you. And for life me, I can't remember exactly how it worked. You just wanted to put the same tiles next to each other and then put cubes out or something. Very, very forgettable, obviously. Wampum. This is 2010. Jeffrey Allers. Jeffrey Allers has designed quite a few games. Piece of Cake. In particular, from Pegasus Spiel, you're merchants in Colonial trading stuff with the Native American villages, and you're getting wampum. The bands of shells and beads uses currency. It won a hippo dice dice thing. Oh, it looks interesting. It looks, I will say, when this game came out, yeah, 2010, around this time frame, there was a lot of card games that looked like this. So this might be a very good one, but it just looks like a lot of the other ones. All right. There's the Batman animated series Rose Ga Rogues Gallery, which I may have played by this time. Those Who Were Eight is a really weird game in which you were trying to be gods. We talked about that last time. Choose One. Oh, and there's Velocity. I got to take a look at that one, too. Choose One. Yeah, this is a... Uh, w which would you pick? But it's a nicer version of it. Sometimes these can be very family unfriendly. If I remember correctly, this is a family-friendly one, right? Fruitcake or Eggnog? Right now. Come on, man. It's eggnog. I'm not a big fan of eggnog, but eggnog is better than fruitcake. Um, although, this looks like it's a... Here, I'm seeing stuff. This all comes together. It's a hot holiday gift pack. Was this... Oh, this was from Looney Labs, wasn't it? Now, I'm, that's the fruitcake fun pack I'm looking at, apparently. Yeah, okay. This is from Looney Labs. And how well do you know your friends? But this was their kind of choose one type thing that they did. Will your friend choose outer space or the bottom of the sea? Bottom of the sea. Window or aisle? <laughs> aisle, baby. All right. Velocity, a bike racing game. Uh, racing bike messengers around the board. When did this game come out? 2010. It does not look like a 2010 game. I like the little bikers. A back of spiel makes me good. Yeah, that's bad font there for that velocity, though. I know it's bike parts. It just doesn't it doesn't mesh well. Oh, honk. Didn't this game just raise three million on uh, Kickstarter? 
I know this isn't the come on one. This is from Hook. Uh, was this reviewed by Dice Tower? It was. Sam Healy did this one. I'm pretty sure I played this one with him. I, I want to say it's a push your luck one, maybe? No, maybe not. Maybe I didn't play this with him. All right, let's keep going down. There's a game called The Crusades. Catlantis. I hate this name so much, but it's from Prospero Hall. I must have seen this, and I must have said I hate this name so much last time I saw it. Ah, ah, those look like bad gifs. I like the coins. Alrighty, yeah, I don't like that artwork at all. But it's Prosper All, so you never know. It might be good or not. Persuade Allies to join your kitty coo. It's a punny mythical twist on mer animals and popular cats. Oh, the hip design includes meme-worthy art. Sure, okay, so that's what they were going for. I'd probably play it. <laughs> Alrighty, moving down here. We have... Snappy Dressers, we gotta look at that. And a Fistful of Dinero. Alright, so Snappy Dressers. Every card matches in exactly one way. Oh, that's interesting. I like that concept. So there's one thing that matches about them. Like, are they're, they're, they're doing one thing the exact same. Like, they're the same animal. They're wearing the same colored glasses. They're carrying the same colored gift. One very unique deck. Well, I, I like it's from the makers of Uno. I like the concept of that. You know, it works well with kids. It's from Mattel. Huh. Okay. I don't know if it's a great game, but I like the I like the concept. Fistful of Dinero, this is from Magic House Games. I gave this one a six. Came out in 2015, and I am really struggling to remember it at all, honestly. There's a lot of weapon cards in here. You poker game goes wrong. You all drive. You you pick cards. You program them. Was this the one where you ran around inside the casino? No. I thought it was. Fistful of the Nero, Magic House Games. I don't know why I can't remember this one. Well, sorry. It must not have made that big of an impression on me. I gave it a six five years ago. Like, I can't remember that at all. All right, here's a couple games that have a lot of re, uh, a lot of ratings. Babylon 5 Component Game System Core Sets from 1997. I do remember one of my friends trying to get me into this when I was in college I think and I was like I don't even know what Babylon 5 is and he's like it's amazing you gotta watch it I was like oh okay and I never did watch it I started watching season one and it kind of faded out of me I know I know it gets better but um, meh. meh it's definitely a 90 style game and Tower of the Wizard Kings this is from Parker Brothers Oh, it looks like one for restoration game to make nice. It's a lot of plastic. I don't think I've ever seen this one in stores. Oh, man, as a kid, though, I would have been like, yes! Maybe this never came out in America. 1993 Parker Brothers. Now it's in English, so must have Parker Brothers. That looks cool. Kid from Home Alone is on it. Not really, but... Hmm. All right. Bezer Wizard Drop Site. We talked about that one, I think, before. This is a game in... It's a little card game about coordinating humanitarian aid shipments, which actually works well. You're just trying to predict where the cards will land. I like this one. It's a nice little card game. And then moving down here, with Starship Troopers Prepare for Battle. I'm pretty sure we talked about this last time because it's not the Starship Troopers I that... Maybe, yeah, this is one of the last ones made by the old Avalon Hill before they were bought by Hasbro. Quartile, Seen It Movie Edition, and Antigua. All right, let's take a look at these. Quartile is one I reviewed. This is a game that looks like dominoes, and you have to match them. I gave it a six, so it must have been an okay game. 
Yeah, it's like dominoes on all four sides. Wow, when did I review that? 2013. Yeah, it looks okay. It looks like the kind of game I'd find at Grandma's house. Seen it. Very popular. This is the movie second edition. A lot of people really like this. It's going to fade out now that fewer and fewer people have DVDs. I wonder if there's a Seen It streaming edition. That would be interesting. Antigua, Ulrich Bloom, and Alan Spiel. So this is a small little box card game. Ulrich Bloom has done the new Minecraft's Builders and Biomes, which is quite a good game. I like that one a lot. And I have not played any of his other games, I don't think. Even though I like the name of this one, Speed Snacks. Um, we'll get to that in about 40 episodes. Um, okay, so it's 1717. You're trying to find gold. All these games always are just one small deck of cards. You can see even here the ships that move around are folded cards. Yeah. All right, cool. Moving down, there's Monster Band. I just reviewed this. Uh, this is where you're trying to tell people you're trying to get your team to find a monster here, but you roll two dice and you cannot mention those characteristics when you're explaining which ones to grab, which is way harder than it sounds. If I'm going down, Zigzag and Attila and Ark of Animals and Mush. That's five different games we're going to look at. All right, if I'm going down as a zombie game. This is from Van Ryder Games. Um... This is back from 2012. Van Ryder Games now, when Van Ryder Games comes out with something, I'm on board. This was still when they were kind of in their small, very independent one. This was a dying card game where you're, it says you're certain your characters will die. It was okay. I just didn't really care for it that much. This, I didn't like the art. I didn't like the idea of it. It just didn't work for me. Zigzag, this one I did not like, and I remember now. It's a fast-paced collecting card game where you're trying to collect these cards so that you can build this track that you move down. And it was just very abstract and boring. Attila, I've not played this one, but it's from Bruno Fiduti and Blue Orange Games. That's a combo I like. I like how the pieces look. Blue Orange. Why is that rabbit running there with a carrot on the front? Huh. Wonder why I never played this one. Maybe it never came to America. One person has a till and two of his warriors, and the other person has three Roman soldiers. And you move it like a knight's move, and then you place a scorched earth, and when you can't move a token, you lose the game. It sounds solvable, but something I would play. Ark of Animals. Uh, in this one, you are collecting animals to put in your ark, and you can see you put them here, and you gotta be careful what animals you put next to other animals. Component quality is uh, not very good, and it's just way too lucky. I remember playing this now. You draw well, and you, you don't draw well, and you do poorly. I like the idea of arc, although the whole idea of multiple arcs is still a weird, confusing one. Mush! Designed by Alan Moon. Designer took it to ride from White Wind, which is a company he started back in 1994. I was entering college, and Alan Moon was designing this dog racing game. This one doesn't seem to have done so well. Now, realize older games have a harder time getting higher rankings on Board Game Geek. Uh, in fact, let's take a look at the rankings of this one and see. Yeah, a lot of sixes and fives here on the sides. No tens. No one said this was a ten. There's a lot of take that in this game, says this player. I hate take that, I hate dice, play snow tails instead. Okay. All right, let's zoom down here and see what else we got. We got Entropy, um, Creative Clash. I'll take a look at that one. When Zombies Attack. There's Roy Stewart Cube's Rampage. Is that based on the movie? All right, let's take a look here. We got Entropy. This is balance all your wooden sticks on an evolving structure without them falling over. How many sticks that you place may touch. Okay, so when you put it out, it has to touch that many sticks. All right, that looks like it's an amusing one or two time abstract, I mean, dexterity game. Creative Clash. This is from Ryan Martin and Ryan Smoker. Why does Ryan Smoker familiar? Do I have know? Nope, that's his only one. Maybe Ryan Martin? Nope, this is their only two games. Uh, 
You have a creative entry and you have to sabotage each other with event cards. Well, I'm kind of out there. Yeah, no, that's unfortunate. When Zombies Attack is a dice game from 2012. 16 custom dice. You can play as many as you want. You can play it as a solitaire game. No reviews, nothing on this one. Hmm. It's from a company called Attack Dice LLC. So this is Rory Story Cubes from the Creativity Hub. And is it, how many dice come with this? Three new dice. Adds Tales of Destruction. Nah, I could see my kids liking that thrown into Rory Story Cubes. All right, Deck of Thieves. I feel like I've seen that one before. Let's see, this game's called Epic Trading Card Game. Well, we can't argue against Epic. Uh, there's Seen in Harry Potter, Game of Thrones Trivia Game, Tribe, Jurassic Park 3's Island Survival Game from 2001. All right, let's take a look at these. Deck of Thieves. All right, so you're taking... That's a lot of cards. Is this a collectible game? Two to four players. You get an identical deck of cards. And you just play cards out into your area. Hmm. Just a couple reviews of this. Yeah, I don't know that I'm interested in this one. Epic trading card game. Don't fool around. That's what this is. Hey, it's actually by Robert Dougherty. Dougherty, sorry. Uh, who did Star Realms, Hero Realms. So this can't be that bad of a game, can it? It's from Epic TCG Com. It doesn't use trading cards. Oh, wait, isn't this the one that... Did I review this? No, this is a different game than I'm thinking of. Is this the game that Epic came from? You start with 30, you got to reduce your mojo. Oh, it's a, it's a TCG. Let's take a look here. Wait, there's... Wait, what? That's cool art. But dinosaurs and mechs? Hmm. This is a thing of the past. Jurassic Park 3 Island Survival Game. Well, this looks kind of cool. Or at least, I like how that board looks and there's like dinosaurs and stuff. This is another kind of game in 2001 that it looks like as a, as a kid, I was not, I was in college in 2001, but I would have, I was out of college in 2001. I had a kid, but, um... Yeah, I like the, the people running around. This definitely looks like a mass market game that's probably not that great of a game, but one that you would want to get anyway just because it looks so cool. You're Fired, which does not look like it's the, uh, an Apprentice game. Oh, Paradise Lost, which I just reviewed recently. You're Fired. You are Fired, and you're trying to get your opponent's boss fired. Oh, okay. Name an employee. That employee's in your opponent's break room. Fire it. If fired, you lose. And it's a fall guy. So it's like a take that game, but you're trying to guess what the other person has. All right. Paradise Lost. Unfortunately, this is a game that mixes everything together that there is. So there's movement here. They tried to be like Tokaido. Then there's like a deduction element in it, like Clue. And then there's a weird combat system in it. And there's just so much in it. So many rules for a game that's just so lucky and unfortunately really boring at the end. I really wanted to like this game, but I did not, unfortunately. Zoom Zoom Kaboom. I like the name of that one. Mage Stones. That has 112 rankings. Uh, Drops and Co. And then Denain1712. All right, so let's take a look at Mage Stones first. A lot of ratings here. This one is from Steve Weiss and Tom Kruszewski. Uh, do I know those names? Steve Weiss did the Siege of Jerusalem. Well, I guess that's a pretty popular game, but that's it. And Tom did a game called Chase. All right, so they, they have a couple other games. It's theme to the Dragonlance background. Okay, there's a grid, and the board wraps, and you roll 3d3, place your tokens on that, 
and you're just capturing stones. So a capturing stone game, but with dice. Hmm. Okay, so that sounds like a sequence game almost. This Drops and Co. game, I know I remember this one. I knocked it. It's a hobby game, which looks great because there's these conveyor belts and the balls come down and you got to make them fall in your basket. It's okay, right? It just also doesn't work as well as it should. Those conveyor belts and all that stuff does not move the pieces like, like they should, especially when you have kids messing with it. Finally, Danain. I don't apologize if I'm not pronouncing this incorrectly. 1712. There's a lot of war games that end up. I always look at the first and last one, and it always seems like they're a war game. Um, so we have a pretty big map here with counter sheets. Those counter sheets don't look bad. They almost look like the GMT counter sheets. So yeah, that doesn't look it doesn't look bad. The game came out in 1998. Those are pretty good looking counters for coming out 20 some years ago. Use the same system. That was used in Value Victus Issue 6? Well, of course. The counters need to be cut out and mounted? Wow, so you, not only do you have to cut them out, you then got to mount them on cardboard. This must, this must have come from a magazine. Probably. Uh, oh, well, maybe that's why it's so lowly rated. Alrighty, well, folks, that's it. That's another 100 games. We're at now... 10,000 below. Now we're 12,500 and below. But there's still good games in the depths here. Treasures that we will find. But we'll find out next time. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. By the way, if you missed if some of these I should have talked about or you want to talk about yourself, mention in the comments below. And you're watching the Dice Tower.